Well, welcome back to Morning Break. Over a half million people go to the emergency room every year for kidney stone problems, and many of those happen during the summer. Just one more reason to look forward to fall and cooler weather, I guess. Dr. Joseph Lipensky from South Coast Health is joining us today with some tips on what to look out for, what you can do to try to avoid kidney stones, and, and if you do get them, what you need to do to, to, to kind of prevent that in the future. Um, and we're talking about this, we joked, kidney stone season. This is really more about the weather, the heat factor than it is about the calendar, so to speak, though. Yeah, correct. Uh, the biggest thing that we see is we see a lot of people during that summertime, hot weather, uh, forget to catch up on their fluid intake. Uh, normal fluid intake is easy during the day to day, uh, but then they're out in the summer doing work in the yard, landscaping, and just forget to keep up with that. And that's where dehydration can play a big role in kidney stones. I think a lot of people hear about kidney stones, maybe even know people that had kidney stones, but don't have really any idea what exactly it is. So briefly for, for folks just educating us on what a kidney stone is. Sure. So a kidney stone is just a collection of organic elements, um, phosphate, calcium, just to name a couple of them. There's many more, uh, but those can all collect based on hydration status and environment inside your body. Um, and lead to a, an actual stone formation. And that stone can cause damage throughout that urinary tract, depending on where it ends up. And this is something that widely has been associated more so with men than women. Um, uh, some of the stats I looked at said about 19% in men over their lifetime, 9% in women. And you're saying that that number, but, well, both of those numbers are going up, but maybe surprisingly that you're seeing an increase in women now. Yeah, and I think a couple of reasons. You know, one of the things that we're seeing is diets have changed. Um, it used to be that men took in a lot of protein, men took in the high salt diet. Diets are changing for everybody. Um, so that's a big thing to look out for. And then I think work environment is changing. You know, we're seeing more and more people, um, women in a workplace where they don't have access to water, don't have access to bathrooms, and that leads to that dehydration, kind of perfect storm for a kidney stone. So let's talk about the uh, the causes, and, and you mentioned dehydration, which seems to be one of the key things we're focusing on here. What are some of the symptoms that you want to watch out for, maybe t when you start to experience something that you think might be a problem? Yeah, so kidneys typically don't cause pain, but kidney stones are one of the reasons that that can happen. Um, so flank pain, lower back pain that radiates around to the groin. Um, dark urine, blood in the urine, like you see here on the monitor. Um, and then if it gets severe enough, that's where you can start to cause the nausea, vomiting, fever, and chills, where you may have a severe infection or a urinary tract infection along with that stone. What, what are some of the concerns if you, if you ignore this, if you ignore it, ultimately you're gonna end up in the emergency room to try to pass the kidney stone, or what can you do if you start to notice these, these issues? Correct. Um, the biggest thing is get evaluated by a professional. Increasing your fluid intake, um, they need to make sure that it's a stone and not something different. Um, increasing that fluid intake and making sure that you're lowering your salt intake. Uh, those are the biggest things that you can do to prevent. Um, but again, I think under under the review and direction of a professional. So there we, we mentioned dehydration, but these are some of the other uh, risk factors that would put you make you more susceptible to kidney stones. Absolutely. And I think the biggest one here is probably salt. Um, salt and the high protein diets uh, that you can see. And again, family history, or personal history, like we mentioned earlier during the break, we talked about recurrence. Those are the people at most risk. And you said once you've had one, you're more likely to, to have more? Correct. And I think that's, you know, whether you have a predisposition to kidney stone formation or whether that's just that you've created an environment that your kidneys are going to form stones. And then know, know what you've done that was wrong and try to reverse that as best you can. And that's where we come in. We can do urine studies and we can do many other studies to try and help prevent kidney stone formation. All right, Dr. Lipinski, thanks for coming in today. We're hoping that this season is moving on past us. And we're Absolutely. Ready for, especially ready for cooler weather, too.